What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, some of the founders you've heard of, some you've never heard of. Dove, I love talking about the challenge stories, the, the stories that through this journey, this up and down journey, um, have not always been uh, maybe amazing. So I had uh, Noah Alper, who started 100, I think, Noah's Bagels, which then turned into Einstein Bagels. But what's fascinating to me is Early on in his start, Dove, what he did is he, sh- he sold religious tchotchkes out of the back of his trunk. Wasn't as successful as Einstein Bagels, to put it that way. But that's what he did. And that's how he got started. Um, and there's, there's many more. Even Moise Navone of Mobileye, um, they got acquired by Intel for $13.2 billion. But he talks about they had a sacrifice along the way. And you know, there were times he had to take pay cuts and he had to go back to his family and say, hey, kids, uh, you can't do any extracurriculars. We're pulling you out of all of them. You know, wife, we can't uh, eat out or, you know, take in anymore. All the niceties are gone. And so Mm -hmm. that's a reality sometimes, you know. And so check out that. Many more stories in inspiredinsider.com. And, um, you know, today's episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And, um, you know, Dove is a huge proponent of this, and, and anyone, if you have the opportunity to actually enter into his JVMM group, please do it. If you know he he cur- highly curates the group, um, I don't know how he let John and I in, but that's that's another story. But uh, we totally appreciate that. But at Rise Twenty Five, you know, we help B two B businesses connect to their Dream One Hundred clients and referral partners by using a podcast to give to them. Okay, because it's all about relationships in business and in life. How do you give to your best relationships? Put them on your platform. Talk to people about what they're doing, not necessarily what you're doing, but what they're doing. And that's what Dove teaches also. Um, And so if you have been thinking about starting a podcast, um, do it. I don't care if you use us or you don't. But if you have questions, we've been doing it for over 10 years. You can go to rise25.com. And Dove, I don't tell, I mean, I used to not tell anyone this and then not because of any reason I was trying to keep it secret, but I just didn't realize that was a motivating factor, which was my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor. And um, his, him and his brother were in concentration camps and were the only people in their family to survive. But the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him and that's, he, that interview lives on my uh, about page of insider.com. So I figure I... Yes, like a podcast will help you with your relationships and with your business, but it helps you and your guests leave a legacy, you know, beyond yourself. So check out rise25.com. You can see John and I bantering like an old married couple in one of the videos. But um, today's guest, I'm super excited to introduce. If you don't know him, you know, he is under the radar. And um, also a big shout out to Joel Irway, which will talk about how he helped shape some of the stuff going on. But um, Dove Gordon is founder of JVMM Group, and you can check out more at ProfitableRelationships.com. Uh, and he helps consultants grow their business by creating their own alchemy network. And we'll talk about what he means by alchemy network. But, you know, we already talked about how important relationships are. And Dove is a master at this. So you can check that out. Also, you can check out ProfitableRelationships.com slash Inspired Insider, where he has a training on being an under the radar leader. So Dolph, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Dr. Jeremy Weiss. Good to be you here. You know, Dove, when I thought about this, I'm like, I want to do a giver series, people who I consider the biggest givers that I know in my relationship. You're one of those people. And it just so happens I'm doing an Israeli and an Israel entrepreneur series as well. So you kind of qualify for both of those. Um, so talk about what you mean by alchemy network. Well, first of all, it takes one to know one. Um, you and John are extraordinarily generous in in connecting people and thinking about always always giving. So, it takes one to know one. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I've been using the analogy of alchemy for years. It's uh, the way I see it. It's really it's about um, 
I think when <clears throat> those who have heard the term usually think about just turning lead into gold, you know, some magic turning lead into gold. Um, but I was, I was thinking about it once and I, it occurred to me that the alchemists of old probably were not these, um, just, you know, um, you know, crazy, Magicians uh, or crazy people who imagine if we can just kind of melt this down and mix in this or that, then we could, you know, turn lead into gold. I have to think that there was a, a thought pattern that may have made some sense to them along the lines of they're probably thinking if we can get to the underlying structure of this lead, we can probably manipulate it and turn it into something more valuable into gold. That's my thinking. Um, and you know, today we could see the underlying structure of lead and who knows what else in ways they can only imagine. As far as I know, we still can't actually turn real lead into real gold. But as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as just people, you know, creative people, we have the ability of, of you know, looking at being in whatever situation we're in and we can either skid across the surface, which is what we most people do most of the time, or we could get to the underlying structure of whatever situation we're in and we can leverage it and turn it into something, something more. So, um, an alchemy network is really, it's about, you know, very often, um, you might know lots of individuals, lots of people, but you know, keeping relationships going takes time, finding, reaching out to people who are potential clients or potential referral sources or whatever it might be, or just people that, you know, you could help if they knew that you existed. <laughs> And, and if they give you the time of day, uh, and that could be mutually beneficial, all that takes time. Uh, and then, you know, what if they're not ready to work with you right now? They say, hey, you know, uh, Jeremy, could you get back to me in six months? I think we'll be ready then. And because you're, you know, you, you take the initiative. So after five months, you get back to them and they say, oh, mom, too bad you just got back to me now. I wish you'd called me like, uh, you know, a month ago because we just started with these other competitors of yours. It's happened to all of us. So we need ways of bringing these disjointed relationships uh, together so that you can uh, really leverage the relationships that you have in a way that's really not possible. I mean, everyone's looking to scale and so on, but you know, a lot actually depends on who you know, and it's very hard to scale relationships. It's a very limited, but if you become the person who brings together a curated group of potential clients of yours, colleagues of yours, recommenders, um, you bring them together and you, you curate the group to make sure that it's, it's people who are, you know, the, the right group for whatever you're doing. Um, and then you lead that group, you facilitate learning and introductions and, um, you know, just like the real value. And I'm kind of touching on this from a high level for now. Uh, for people in that group, even when the two of them are talking to each other, they know that you were a part of it. It's also a way for you to really keep your finger on the pulse of all the different potential clients that you have in the mix there or past clients so that you understand what's going on in their businesses and and you and they think of you uh, when they're actually ready. So you don't get to that situation where, oh, you know, I wish you'd come to us a month ago because we just started with this other firm. So um, Alchemy Network is about taking, you know, instead of just having relationships and wanting relationships. It's a way of bringing people together that creates more value for everybody. Yeah. You're always top of mind if that's the case, because they're part of your group. And so talk about the early idea of the JVMM. Take me back. Early idea. So I think I've been running this, uh, I've got two alchemy networks right now. Um, one is the JVMM. That's a group of colleagues of mine, uh, which you're one. Uh, and the other is the Under the Radar Leaders Network, which is much uh, newer. And that's really for consultants and professional service firm owners who are looking to really build their own alchemy networks. I'm helping them learn how to do that. So JVMM, I think it's about nine, maybe 10 years old. Mm. And I just formed it because I was looking to, uh, to reach small business entrepreneurs, consultants, experts, and so on using the internet. I was looking to reach those people and through joint venture at the time, teleseminars webinars were not, uh, I don't know if they're done at all then, but maybe, you know, I think there was, there was, what was it? Webex and there was, it was and go to webinar. Right. So, um, and, and you know, I joined a number of different online forums looking to find the community of people that I felt 
comfortable with the, the, because I wasn't at the time it was very common to talk about, you know, your email list is your, is your ATM machine. You just kind of send out offers and, and you, you hit them hard and, <laughs> and money comes in. And I was never comfortable with that because uh, um, these email addresses represent people and these people have dreams and they have frustrations and, and it just, it never sat well with me. So I was looking for, to, for a community of people that, um, that I could collaborate with because we had similar values because we took a long-term perspective in terms of our relationships with each other and with our email subscribers. So I didn't find that group. So I just started my own and I reached out to the, a handful of people who I had met online in various different places. I don't even remember all of who they were, uh, and where we'd met, although I'm pretty sure at least some of those are still in, in the group. Um, and I said, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. Would you want to join? And they said yes. And over the following years, we grew that to a pretty serious, significant, um, big group. I mean, it, it was at 195, 200 members um, about a year ago. And I realized that about half were active, half were not. It was time to switch from a free group, which I'd run all those years, to paid. And now there is a, a modest annual membership. Uh, and... and um, I was, I was, I was really scared of making that move. Was that was a tough afraid. decision? It was a very tough decision. Um, I was, I was very scared. I thought I'd lose everything. I thought I'd lose all those relationships and, and, uh, but the truth is it's been, it's been remarkably good. It's been great. And, and it was an important step that I needed to take because it helped me understand how to make that transition successfully. Uh, we now have, um, 60 plus, I think we're close to 70 members, right? So we went, you know, I was afraid we'd end up with, with between 10 and 20. We went, we went down to, I think it was 50 and slowly we've been adding some more people. You know, I don't, How did you, you know, decide to navigate that conversation dove? Because like for now it seems obvious because you've had it, but someone who's working with you is like, okay, dove, I'm going to shift from free to paid. What did that shift look like? How was that? How are those conversations? I was a part of those conversations. I know, but I'll yeah. So. Well, I mean, you know, going back, first of all, this is um, when you, when you, when you have good people around you, you're always going to have some people who see what's possible for you that you're not seeing. Hmm. Now, you play that role for other people. So I, you know, collected this fantastic group of of really first class people, and there were some people in the group who are seeing what's possible uh, for me that I wasn't even seeing, hmm. and. And um, because I wasn't seeing it, obviously, I had lots of questions, lots of fears, lots of con you know concerns, because so much of what I'd done was dependent on these relationships. I was afraid of losing them. Um, so, you know, one, one person in particular, so, you know, I was having a, a pretty, we were talking every few weeks, you know, I was helping him with some things, he was helping me with some things. And he said, you really need to start charging as, uh, okay but this and but that and how much and how are people going to react? And I, I laid out all my, my worries and fears. Other, there, there have been other members over the years who, um, who also said, you know, you really should start charging because it'll raise the level of people in the group. Now I can tell you from experience that that's not the case. Uh, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that when people, people say, well, if I charge, then, then people are more committed and more into it. And I, I can tell you that, uh, we had some fantastic uh, participation from first-rate people uh, who were not paying because what we did was we created a wonderful network, a wonderful community that, you know, they realized that, hey, if, if I participate, I will benefit. So it absolutely is not always going to be tied to money. Having said that, what a, an annual membership does do is, first of all, it it gives me some compensation for the time I put into leading it, which is totally, you know, I'm, I'm really okay with that. Um, Should be. And, and it also makes it clear to people who, you know, it makes it clear to everybody like who wants to be there. Because if, if we had a, you know, about you know, 200 people and only and about half of them were not really active, that's not necessarily healthy either. So, um, you know, even though the other half were active, uh, and it was, you know, very, very valuable. Still, it was, uh, I, I realized there was time for what that next step. So I laid out some of my fears. I was worried about, um, 
I don't remember exactly what they all were, but but they were very, they all seemed very real. And it was exactly like what you said. I I, I concluded after discussing, you know, so I discussed them with 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 that that person and and I reached out to a number of other people who I know who've been very supportive over the years and you know um you know and in and and most of them said like yeah i don't know why you didn't start charging years ago so is that what you did to navigate as you reached out to get feedback from from people in the group yeah well i wanted to know that i would have at least a core group that i could rebuild from right so you know and there was there was one member who's saying you definitely should like you know he was in in the J, Joe Polish's twenty five k group and, and he's like this is just as good you know it's like in many ways, um, great conversations, great people. It's like uh, um, and he's like what's your PayPal and then like he PayPal sent over some money like you know on the spot which which I'll always appreciate because um, there's th- that definitely said something and. I ended up charging more than what he sent over because he sent over what I was thinking about at the time, but I made the decision a few weeks later and the good sport that he is, he paid up the difference. So, you know, how do you decide on what to charge? Well, you know, I, um, cause I can see that balance, yeah. right. And we'll get more into running. I mean, I, how do I start? I figured that, it's something it's less than most serious people are paying for, you know, even certain software add-ons over the course of a year, but it's enough to make a difference. And it's enough that they have to make a decision, but not that much, you know, it's just something like they, they would think about like, yeah, it's going to be worth, uh, you know, at least 10 to a hundred times that over the course of the year. And the answer for m- anybody serious is yeah, of course. And at the same time, it, you know, it, it's, um, you know, it just it gives me that extra little push to make sure that things are running smoothly, you know, which I've always done it, I think, a good job of anyway. But um, but still, it's like it's something that I was able to recognize that. Oh, OK. And making that transition really also helped me realize that this is um, this this is something that I can help other people do. Because. There are so many, you know, everybody would like to just kind of give our credit cards over to Facebook, run some ads, uh, have, you know, and then have a, you know, a, an overflowing business. But most people who are experts, consultants, professional service firm owners, even business owners, most people who've tried that did not make it work for them or did not make it work in the long run, you know, even if it worked for a period of time. You know, one of our members uh, was putting in, I forgot how much every month, but um, he was running a, like a two and a half, $3 million a year business. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, the Facebook algorithm changed and everything went off a cliff like that. He spent the next nine months and $600,000 going through three different agencies, trying to bring it back. <laughs> Nothing. He had to completely reinvent himself, which is um, remarkable. He's, he's, he's still doing well. But it's not what he was doing. So, I mean, there is nothing like relationships, you know, when, especially when it comes to high value consulting, high value coaching. People, for the most part, will find you through relationships. Um, are there exceptions? Yeah. You know, I, I came to realize a number of years ago that there are two paths to thriving as an independent consultant or, 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 or an expert. One, I think, of as the path of the charismatic guru, and the other one is the path of mastery. And there's, they're both legitimate paths. There's nothing wrong with being the charismatic guru type if you're just treating people ethically. And, you know, presumably most of them do. But the, the problem is that most of us do not belong on that path. We wake up in the morning, we say, hey, I'm, I'm really good at X. I'm world class at X. I can help businesses and people with X. And it's really valuable. How do I get clients? I thought it would be a lot easier than it's turning out to be. And, you know, you look around and, and all the charismatic gurus are the ones that we see. And they're saying, well, you've got to be doing Facebook ads. You've got to be on Instagram. You've got to be on Twitter. I mean, or whatever. And once upon a time, the answer was you got to be blogging. Remember that? Remember blogging? So um, <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Po- you got to be podcasting, right? which, which is a fantastic medium. But um, And you help people understand the right and wrong kind of ways to go about it for most people. 
you know, there are some who the charismatic guru type, they're going to blow up in big, uh, with a big audience, but it's not the right strategy for most people, which is what you teach. Um, so most people end up, they're kind of walking down the path of the charismatic guru, following that guru, trying to, trying to, you know, follow their advice. What they don't realize is that the, the one thing that that guru is relying on, uh, to a degree that that they may or may not even be conscious of, uh, that that they cannot transfer to you is that their set of values and personality. And if you're not the kind of person who is interested in putting yourself up on a pedestal as a, as a, a celebrity, if you're not the kind of person who is really interested in, you know, kind of becoming that that type of, uh, you know, it's, it's just not it's not who you are, right? It's it, it's it, most people I think would like to be hired by their ideal clients because for who they are, not for who they're pretending to be. And if that's not who you are, then it's not going to work for you. And it's going to, and, and people go months, if not years, kind of struggling against that. Because when you don't know what yes to do, and people say, do this, you're going to try this, and you're going to try that. And when it doesn't work, and you're not sure, like, why does it work for them and not for me? You think there's something wrong with you. But, but the answer is no. I mean, you just got to get off the path of the charismatic guru and get back on the path of mastery where you belong. Mm. So creating, and that's, and that's another thing is that most people, and I'm talking about, you know, let's say independent consultants, you know, obviously the, if someone's leading a larger company, a larger uh, consulting firm, you know, the numbers will go up, but most independent consultants are not looking for, you know, multi seven figure and scaling. It's just not what most people want. Nothing wrong if you do want that, but it's just not what most people want. Most people are looking for a good mid six figure, or maybe upper six figure uh, income with some time freedom. Time to enjoy it, time to be with their families, time to to travel, time to, you know, the ability of spending, you know, of of spending some of that money without having to think about it. That's what most people really want. And what they want is they want to get there by having the opportunity of doing great work with great clients um, who appreciate them, appreciate them for who you are. So how do you create that consistent flow of clients um, if that's who you are, right? It's not by following somebody who's got such a very different set of dreams and, and aspirations and values and personality. And again, I'm not judging. I'm not saying that one is right. The other one is wrong. I'm not. I'm simply saying that you've got to take the path. That's the right fit for you. So when you say under the radar, okay, so you could be an under the radar and lead this alchemy group. Is that what you're referring to? The path no. of mastery? Yeah, um, you know, I say that you can become an under the radar leader in your industry and have all the clients that you want. And you do that by developing your own alchemy network, which we talk about at profitable, profitablerelationships.com. Right. So, um, and, and the idea is like, look, if, if you can develop relationships, if you can get to know 15, 30, 50, 100 people in your industry, like, you know, build, get to know them to the point where they recognize that you're at least somebody. Um, who's worth talking to once in a while, you know, they may not know you all at the, you know, as good friends, right? Some people they'll know you different, different degrees, but if, if, if you get to the point where they're, they're willing to open your email and reply, take your phone call, your text message and respond. And the next level is where they reach out to you to ask you certain questions. It doesn't matter that nobody else knows who you are. It doesn't matter that you're not famous that you're not a, a, a you know a best-selling author or because these are people now who know that when they need X, you're the one to call. They're going to call you. They understand the problems you help solve, the results that you enable, and they understand who to introduce you to because that's part of, uh, obviously you have to, you know, this is, uh, there's a, uh, you know, I, I, I've developed and teach a, a strategic or, you know, a, a systematic way of going about all these different stages, but the key idea is that if you have these relationships and your aim is, you know, a good mid to upper six figure income, you don't need that much more. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what do you mean by stages? Well, there's, there's identifying, uh, well, the way I say that I, I like doing this is to bring people into your network. So for example, I have a client who, um, you know, he had a, a remarkable two or three days, a number of months back where, he was reaching out to executives at um, nice size companies um, through LinkedIn cold. A lot of people do that. You identify a potential client, someone who fits a profile, 
you reach out to them, send a connection request and maybe start a conversation. So within, it was two or three days, he had five executives at, at $500 million plus and billion dollar plus companies book themselves onto his calendar, which, right? Cause he'd reached out to them through LinkedIn using messaging that we developed together. Uh, they responded, had a little bit of back and forth and then booked themselves on this calendar. Why? Because he wasn't taking the typical approach that most people take. He was inviting them to his alchemy network. When you lead an alchemy network, it also you're creating a currency out of nothing, right? Because and, and there, there are different options. Like you could be making another fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year for the kind of relationship marketing that you're probably already doing and not getting paid for. I mean, that's a lesson I learned last year, right? Uh, all that you know, and and I've just built on that. I mean, that's fine. Um, in some cases, uh, it might make sense to start off for free. I'm kind of going a little on a tangent, but even if you're going to, even, even when you're charging a membership for your Alchemy Network, uh, you're still in a position where you're essentially giving something that's very valuable to these people for a modest, you know, a modest fee. Um, so they reached out, they, they responded, and, and four out of five ended up joining his Alchemy Network. The fifth one he felt was not a good fit. So now he's building relationships with these people and a new client for him is worth almost $200,000 on the low end. He just closed the deal about six, uh, six, eight weeks ago. I think he's almost finished it for $175,000 and it's a 90 day project, right? So he doesn't, you know, he doesn't need, he's not even aiming for more than a few of those a year, his capacity, he'd be at capacity. Right. So that's another thing is he needs, he needs to decide if he even wants to increase his ability, his capacity. Right. But most people that I, you know, most consultants, experts, they'd be very happy with that type of thing. This is part time, 90 days. Right. And it turned out that he's doing more of it from home than he planned to because uh, because of the coronavirus uh, issues. Um, and in, in a sense, that that was a, a, a blessing for him because he came to realize that he could do a lot of things remotely that he hadn't realized were even possible. So now he's got this growing alchemy network. And that, that, that's so there's uh, you asked me about the stages. There's identifying potential members. There is um, there is, you know, reaching out and connecting with them, like beginning that conversation. There's interviewing them, so to speak. And then there's enrolling and onboarding them into your group. And all of these require a thought you know, some thought and, and system and so on, so that you're not constantly reinventing the wheel. And so that you, you've got your, your messaging and, and your targets um, kind of well-defined. So, um, and then of course is leading the group, you know, leading the group. And then, you know, then there's, there's kind of identifying, you know, where people are and, and looking for opportunities. If it's a, if it's a group of 30, 50, 100, 150 potential clients, uh, these are like you talked about, you know, the Chad Holmes concept of Dream 100. I think of this as very much uh, like, you know, the, a, a more modern evolution of a Dream 100 approach where you're not just kind of reaching out to everybody individually. You're really building a community. And by the way, when you have one happy client in that group, they're going to talk to others that you've introduced them to, tell them some stories, and that's going to just grease the wheels for that next big project, the next big client. Dovi, you know, there's a lot of things to unpack for a second there with, you know, starting, running, and leading a group. And um, talk about the curation process a little bit. Because you're really good at curating, which is a huge value to everyone in the group. So I think you, you need to be clear as to what you're looking for and what you're not looking for. And you, need, you also need the discipline to not accept the wrong person, you know. But it's really not that different than um, you need discipline if you're running a restaurant to not use cheap ingredients, you know, that are that, that you know, to not cut corners. When you're when you're forming an alchemy network, you are you're creating a product in a sense. Right. And you need to know you need to be clear as to who is it that you're looking for and why. You know, for the, before you even start, why are you building an alchemy network? Why? What's it going to do for your business? You've got to know how it's going to work backwards and serve you. I've had some some uh, some people in the under the radar leaders network uh, share how they're. Uh, I'm going to start this. Uh, I remember a conversation recently. I'm, I'm starting this network for those people. My question was, well, how is that going to how is that going to drive your business forward? 
Well, not the answer was a. Um, it sounded like an intention was a nice thing to do. It's a community I have access to, uh, good people. But there was that gap there, and my suggestion is um, go back to the design phase. You got to figure out what you're, you know, what what are you doing, so that's going to drive your business. And then, you know, what are the values that you're looking for? So when I was debating with myself about whether I'm going to charge, you know, one of the things that I said was like, look, there's so much generosity in the group. You know, if, if I if I need to reach out to you or John or anybody really and, and just you know ask you a question, I, I've got that access, which is valuable to me. And in a sense, it's probably more valuable than the membership that I'm charging. Right. So would I was afraid, like, would people no longer be willing to to get on a call with me for half an hour to talk something through uh, if if they're also paying an annual membership fee? And this member who would, uh, was really encouraging me to to do that he's like to dove the group everybody is, is the generosity is because of the leadership because of the the model that you sell or that you um, that you set it's not going to change just because people are paying this modest annual membership and that was such a an eye opener for me that was just i was like huh hmm. you know and and he's absolutely right that's it that's been absolutely been the case you know and that's really a big, that's a big value for other people in the group. Like when you're, when you're bringing together the right people and you're encouraging them to get to know each other, you're looking for them to have one-on-one -on -one and in other conversations and meetups. One of the things I enjoy the most is getting pictures from people who are both at some event somewhere in, you know, in the Midwest or, or in California or wherever that I couldn't be at, but um, it's great to see five or six or a dozen JVMM members getting together and, you know, having, and, and I love seeing that. Um, and, you know, there's being able to collaborate and to pick the brains of other people because there's that professional courtesy that you get just by being in there, you know, and, and that, that's something that other people would pay through the nose for. <laughs> so what is your process for curation? What do you look for, for someone for the JVMM? I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for people who are well, specifically for JVMM. I'm looking for people who are m number one marketing and selling to small business entrepreneur, consulting expert, um, that market. We do have some people who also sell to SME and, and corporate. So we do have some of that. Um, but some, first of all, they have to be selling to the right market, you know, and the reason for that, obviously, because we're, you know, the, the core idea is that people in the group are open to promoting each other, right? In one way or the other. So that's the first thing I'm looking for. Now, uh, a number of years ago, someone came to me and he wanted to uh, nominate um, someone he knew as a, a member of JVM, as somebody who is uh, focused on the dating and relationship space and had over a million email subscribers. And I said, that sounds really amazing, but what would we be able to offer him? Like, he's just like, nobody in the group is going to promote him or almost nobody like what would he and even if they did it would be you know most i mean we have some we had some people with like you know you know like a low six figure list but that's that was the higher end right um so i just i i said no i mean i mean because i i feel like everybody everybody in the group um needs to be able to both contribute and receive and if I can't see how somebody could both give and gain, as they say, I think in BNI, right? Um, you, you've got to be able to to contribute and receive. That has to be. I'm not looking for any heroes. I'm not looking for any celebrities in the group. Like uh, no one is in the group because they're a celebrity. Although we have some celebrities in the group, uh, everyone is in there because of their mastery. So that's I'm looking for number one, the market they're going to. Number two, the fact that they're um, that they're I'm going adding something that they are open to cross promotion of one kind or another for others in the group. Um, and number three, because of, you know, who they, there's an, they can both contribute and benefit because I came to realize, you know, a number of years ago, somebody emailed the group, uh, to our, our group email and, and said, Hey everyone, this other member is doing this paid workshop, uh, over the weekend, check it out. And I got a couple of grumbling emails. Uh, saying what was that all about not because we're afraid of promotion like we're all market and sell things none of us are afraid of someone telling us hey this is going on and it, and you can pay for it i mean that's fine no one you know we're all pay for stuff but it's because she hadn't participated in at least a year maybe longer 
So there was that, emo you know, that was it the emotional bank account that Stephen Covey talks about. It was like, what, why is she just suddenly popping up and sending us a promotional thing? So I emailed her behind the, the scenes and I said, hey, you know, I got I got some slack, some some flack for your your email. She's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I really I should participate more, and so and uh, I'll make an effort to participate more. And and I responded. I said, look, I'm not interested in you in giving you another chore. Like that's not at all. Like I don't want you to feel like you have to participate. I only want people to participate when they want to participate because the value of the group is a direct result of people who recognize that when I participate for my own selfish reasons, everybody gains. When people feel like they have to participate, it doesn't, you know, that that's, um, it doesn't work. So, you know, I, and, and then I'm looking for people who are happy to share that they're out if they, you have to be doers out there doing not just thinking about it, not just talking about it. And their business has to be at a stage where I can actually see like, I'm, I'm interested in what I think of as high quality that they could be somewhat beginner, not too beginner, intermediate, advanced. And, um, you know, and, and, and a willingness to go out and, and, you kind know, of implement all the time and then come back and share with the rest of us what's working and what's not working. You know, what did you do that you're proud of? And what did you do that you kind of wouldn't like to, experience again. So these are the things that I'm looking for. So, if, you know, I want to talk about profitable relationships.com and a little bit of the evolution of that. Um, and you mentioned, you know, when we were chatting before hitting record about Joel Irway influenced it. So talk about what we see now and what that influence was. Well, uh, Joel Ir Irway, who is, um, focuses on what was his uh, webinar? What's his website? Joel, uh, Joel, Joel Irway .com, I think. Look him up, but he's an uh, expert at webinars. Yeah. And so he, many, many webinars, I think. Right. He's said. in our group. And I, you know, I recently took a second look at some of what he's been been doing, what he's been teaching. And I was very impressed. He's got a really good, solid model. Um, and I've just, uh, you know, I, I use that as a framework for the video that I put up on uh, Profitable. It's a, it's a short presentation. It's 13 and a half minutes, I think it is. And it really just lays out the framework of how to, you know, how you could be earning anywhere from 50 to 100, 150, $200,000 a year from a lot of the relationship marketing that you're already doing and you're doing it for free. And I just used his framework for that because it's just a very good, simple, clean framework. And, and, um, you know, and, and Joel is a really good guy, you know, like, uh, what's one of the things in the framework trusting. that sticks out to you? Um, well, he, he talks about, the uh he has a really good idea for just a very simple framework what does he call it his super super offer a uh, power offer his power offer right uh which he you know talks about a lot which it basically is you know, let me um if i could help you x right you know would you take me up on it right i mean so what i have here is if i offer to help you turn your relationship marketing from a time sink into a brand new Fifty to two hundred thousand dollar a year revenue stream. That means you're getting paid for things that you're already doing. Would you take me up on the offer, right? Mm -hmm. So, no, I wrote that. I don't actually. I, I don't know if Joel would consider that an effective <laughs> application of his principle. <laughs> but I, I can't. You know, I don't want to imply his endorsement on that. But, um, but, but that's you know that's that's definitely something that stands out. And and it really it, it gives frame and focus. And it's really, for me, it's really just helped add another little chink in my own slow rebranding, moving, moving everything over to ProfitableRelationships.com because it's been quite, an, you know, several years probably that I've been thinking to myself, you know, I, I, the, even before I was charging for the JVM, like this is, this is a valuable thing, but is this something that like, but I, I used to, I didn't appreciate what I was doing. I didn't, I, I thought like anybody could do this. This is not hard. Um, but, but then I, I started to realize that I don't know anybody who is doing it. You know, there's, I mean, I'm not talking about a Facebook group. I'm not talking about a LinkedIn group. I'm not talking about a, you know, a, a Slack group. I'm not talking about, um, you know, being I style networking. I'm not talking about any of that. And it's the nuances that make the, <clears throat> that make the difference. So, you know, I realized that this is something that other people could be using. They build their own alchemy network, something I've been doing for 10 years plus in various forms. 
Um, and now we've got, you know, I've got a, just yesterday I heard from a client uh, in the Netherlands and he's uh, his alchemy network. Uh, he just kicked it off. He's got uh, started with, uh, I think it's about almost 10 people. It was somewhere between eight and 10. And he's focused on uh, sa um, senior leaders of SaaS companies, software as a service companies. He's got, um, you know, I, I think he said most of the companies in there are are funded like they've received investment funding and they're all they had a great first call he was telling me about, he was telling us in the under the radar leaders network about it you know um and you know i've got another uh, another member there a woman who um she saw an opportunity to really kind of piggyback on an existing community and take the, the principles of the alchemy network and and she kind of ended up with an alchemy network overnight uh, that includes about a hundred people, several of whom have already sent her business. So that's a colleague-based alchemy network, uh, and that that brings in the question of you know well, she doesn't necessarily own that network, but sometimes it doesn't matter if you own it or not, right? Sometimes you know there's there's benefit to just going into something that someone else is running, and you realize an opportunity, and she's bringing the same principles. She's already gotten, I don't know, like probably um, several mid to upper five figure referrals from from people in that group so it sure made sense for her to jump in and ref, and and create a network for them using what she learned from me so it's uh you know I, it's just she's gonna have she's gonna get more so those are the kinds of things that that i'm helping people do and I, I love that because these are not the charismatic guru types these are people who are masters at their craft they love what they do they're really good at what they do and all they want is to be doing great work with great clients and making a great income and have some time to enjoy themselves and to enjoy their income and to spend time with their family so so thank you first of all i have one last question but um i sh everyone should check out profitablerelationships.com see what you're doing there is a great video there. You have some great videos actually on YouTube that I binge watch over the past couple of days. Uh, I encourage people to check out. Um, what's the first action people should start to take to create their own alchemy network? What should they start with? Um, let's see. I, I actually, uh, I, I it, it, you also mentioned the ProfitableRelationships.com forward slash um, Inspired Insider. And there we have a, a, a different uh, middle kind of mini training there that mm. that, that lays out those steps that, that you can follow and, and, and you know start to do right away. But the, the first two decisions that you need to make are, number one, who is my ideal member? And number two, what's the big idea? Because you've got to have clarity about who is the ideal member and what is the big idea that is going to make this person want to participate and you know these are simple questions they're not always so easy to answer uh, but uh, but those are absolutely the foundational the foundational questions that you need to, the front the first steps so what are people the best way to people get a hold of you um dove gordon at dove gordon.net um, or profitable relationships.com there's uh, definitely some some way here to reach out to me. Uh, so, but uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, I'm pretty much uh, everywhere at do with uh, Dove Gordon. Everyone, check out profitablerelationships.com. You know, if you're wondering who's pulling the strings behind the behind the scenes of some of these groups, sometimes, oftentimes, it some though that path leads back to Dove, uh, whether you realize it or not. So. Dole, thanks for what you do. Everyone check it out. Thanks again. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.